So, um, my name is Vitaly Wool, uh, and I represent the northern part of the Consulco group, uh, the Swedish entity called Consulco AB. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, a Z swap backend that uh, um, I took my spare time implementing, and then I was interested in uh, getting some on hand experience with Rust. Uh, and so I tried to write it in Rust and get it to, to the point where it actually works, at least to a certain extent, uh, and then do some testing. And so today I'm going to share uh, a bit of experience uh, uh, that I obtained while doing that. So um, uh, speaking about us as Consulco Group, uh, well, you can, you can read this slide. This is, this is an obligatory slide. I can talk a little more about this, but we are like a group of experts in Linux and embedded Linux, primarily in the kernel and system development, spread pretty much all over the globe. So the headquarters is in the US, uh, in Silicon Valley, and we have some European guys, uh, which are more, more southern than me, uh, and I re represent the, the Swedish Consulco, which acts as a separate entity called Consulco AB. Um, so, yes. So this is this is this is this is how you look like uh, when you start working uh, for, for for Linux kernel development. You know. Um, so especially especially out north, like in Malmo, Sweden. Uh, so yes, yes, I, I, do, I do live in Sweden for, for quite a while, and um, we have a subsidiary of Consulco working there, uh, doing kernel development primarily for Android, uh, as opposed to uh, most of the other guys doing stuff for Open Embedded. Um, and and this, this, this work actually uh, was spun off by some bits of Android development uh, having been done for, for Sony Mobile back in the days. Uh, because it's, it's there, it's there where I had to uh, dig a little bit into swapping and ZSwap and ZRAM and all those things. And so in this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about swapping just in general to, to uh, give you a bit of a background and what ZSwap actually is and how it works and what are uh, allocators for, for ZSwap. And then um, I'll talk about uh, ZBlock, which is uh, a new allocator backend uh, about to be submitted to, to the mainline, uh, basically substituting Z3 fold uh, that we have developed during the Sony Mobile days, uh, and and then we'll talk more about Rust and how to re-implement algorithms uh, used in ZBlock in Rust and, and uh, do all the things that you're uh, usually doing C to connect to the other subsystems of the kernel, but in Rust. And then then we will pass over. I hope quickly to the funny part, like comparisons, because I have charts. And I know that everyone is more interested in comparing and seeing the charts and uh, discussing why this and that is faster and that and this. Uh, so yes, um, let's go. That's swapping. Um, so if you're a little short of RAM, uh, then it's uh, a usual thing to, to do some swapping, and that said, using secondary storage to store and retrieve data that's basically uh, unused or haven't been used for a while. Um, so in the straightforward cases, secondary storage is usually uh, a flash device or uh, a hard disk or an SDD. So um, what we're doing here usually is we trade memory for performance so we save we save memory by offloading uh, the pages that are not used somewhere uh, which has lower throughput uh, but bigger storage 
and then eventually uh, when we need these pages, if we ever need these pages, uh, then we will upload them and this is the swapping system uh, or the paging system of the kernel that is responsible for this. Uh, however, if we want to optimize this a little bit, or in some other cases, there are some embedded usage cases for this. Uh, I don't think I don't think I want to go deeply into this because we're here mostly for the Rust, right? Yeah, let, let's 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 do voting, okay? So, who's more interested in Z swap and Z blog and all these algorithmic things? Okay, so so. Uh, and who's more interested in to, uh, to, 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 uh, to get deeper into uh, how we transform uh, something written in C to Rust? All right. All right. I thought it. I thought it. I thought as much. Okay. So, so um, just, just we'll, we'll quickly go over this. So this is, that swap is a uh, write back cache uh, which compresses pages, like it intercepts pages that are swapped out uh, and compresses and stores in RAM. So at that point, uh, we don't write to any persistent storage. It's still in RAM, but, in compress but it's compressed. All these pages are compressed. And so to uh, effectively store these pages, you need to have a specific allocator uh, that is good uh, at storing compressed pages in a compact way. Uh, and historically, uh, the first one was ZBud. It's a very simple allocator that puts one compressed page uh, in a beginning of a physical page and another page. Uh, it aligns it to the end. So it's up to two objects called bodies per page. And then there was SSMalloc, which is uh, really complicated, uh, but uh, you can achieve really high compression rate with that one. Uh, and then uh, for, for Sony Mobile, there was an attempt to um, create something uh, that is uh, better compression-wise than ZBud, and at that time uh, had more throughput than ZS Malloc did before all the, all the optimizations uh, that ZS Malloc uh, undergone. And that was a threefold uh, with up to three objects per page. And now it's on the way out of kernel because it's obsolete. Um, uh, and you can see that currently, uh, if we compare, that, that's, that's like an aggregate uh, comparison of performance and compression of the existing uh, Z-Swap backends. You can see that there's basically no point in having that threefold because uh, its performance uh, is inferior, and, and then uh, the compression rate is higher than the one of ZBud, but still a lot lower than ZS Malux. Um, and finally, this is just an informational slide for, for ZFull. Uh, we'll try to, to, uh, to see how this maps to uh, Rust uh, a little later. So maybe, maybe we'll go back to this. Uh, however, let's just move on to that block in a nutshell. So it's a, uh, it's a high density allocator. Um, once again, if, if, you, if you want, I can talk a little more about this, but let's keep it short. Uh, the thing is that uh, the main complexity for ZS Malloc uh, comes from the fact uh, that uh, the objects can spun over uh, several pages, well, two pages basically. So it can start on one page and end on the other, uh, and uh, that that is why it has a high compression ratio. But on the other hand, uh, that's also why it has such a complex structure uh, with uh, moving objects around and uh, relying heavily on the MMU and so on and so forth. That's that's for that as Uh So the idea was. Uh, that objects should not cross the page boundary, uh, but on the other hand, it's uh, sort of uh, it's not obligatory to uh, to operate uh, with the objects uh, that have 
uh, sizes of, of power of two, as, as we usually do um, specifically in the kernel space. So we can, we can operate on objects uh, that, uh, that have weird sizes, but if we put them together, uh, then uh, they will occupy almost all the page. So there will be a remainder, uh, but, you know, who cares that much about nine bytes out of 4,096. Uh, uh, so so that's, uh, that's something that we can live with. And so we divide pages or blocks of pages uh, into uh, chunks of the same size, and those sizes uh, can look very odd, uh, but on the other hand, it provides quite a good flexibility uh, for objects, uh, for compressed objects, because they do not necessarily have to be a power of two. Uh, so there's a good flexibility to store objects uh, of a size close to the chunk size in those in those chunks that we have divided the page in. So, what's next? Um, it's actually a very simple algorithm. Uh, so if, you, if you're allocating uh, an object for Z block, then you find an appropriate block type uh, for the size uh, of the object. And you find an empty slot you mark the slot as occupied and return the handle, and then it's up to that swap to fill this, uh, this slot uh, using this handle. Well, freeing is just doing the same thing in reverse order, more or less. So that block is, since it's a simple algorithm, uh, the code footprint is also small. It's smaller than the one of Z3Fold smaller, a lot smaller than the one of ZS malloc, a little bigger than ZBot, uh, but then again, it provides uh, a lot better compression ratio overall than uh, ZBot can offer. Uh, it doesn't require MMU, so it can, it can be used without uh, for certain purposes. And um, yeah, if we add to, to the chart that we had before uh, that block with uh, you know, aggregate uh, values for performance and compression, uh, then we can see that at least that block is way better than that threefold in both. Uh, and then it provides equal or slightly superior performance uh, than that as Malak and that bud. And uh, it's not that far compression wise from that as Malak, which is like uh, the industry standard, more or less. Uh, okay, so um, that said, um, I've been doing some kernel stuff for quite a while. There was a slide about this. Uh, so it's like 20 plus years. Uh, and of course, it was mostly C. And, and then, uh, then I heard about the Rust technology and uh, that th there are people, uh, you know, uh, living close by out there in Sweden uh, who are very much into, into Rust uh, and have uh, some positive experience working with Rust and promoting Rust into the kernel. And so, uh, yeah, I was interested in that as a new technology. Uh, so, but on the other hand, I heard a lot of skeptical opinions about it. So just, just on a very basic level, uh, what have I heard about Rust before I started? Uh, so, well, it's a memory safe language. That's what they say. Uh, but still not yet ready for the kernel. That's what others say. Uh, and compilers still change way too much. That's what they say. Uh, and to see, you know, that the kernel infrastructure, Linux kernel infrastructure is pretty much C oriented, or well, not pretty much, it is C oriented. Uh, so 
Mm, that there have to be shim layers and the quality of the shim layers is questionable. That's what I heard. Uh, and then, then I heard also that there were attempts to implement Rust to drivers in kernel. But then, then again, one of my neighbors, and, and uh, yeah, there's this guy, Linus Valley, uh, who is not as famous as the other Linus, but still quite famous, at least uh, in the southern Sweden. Uh, yeah, he, he expressed the, the uh, uh, educated opinion that Rust should be deployed in subsystems, primarily not drivers like USB stack and networking stack. Uh, so uh, things, things where memory safety uh, and overall safety of Rust, at least declared safety of Rust is important and the, the possible drawbacks uh, are something to live with. Uh, as opposed to the drivers where you still have to do a lot of unsafe operations. So, uh, well, the advantages of Rust uh, in implementing drivers are mostly unclear. Uh, and so, so uh, I thought, well, okay. Um, an allocator backend is a subsystem. Uh, and since I know pretty much nothing about Rust, it's simple enough for me to, to just start uh, messing around with Rust and, and trying to uh, rewrite uh, or write uh, an alternative version of that block with the same algorithm uh, but in Rust. Uh, so yeah, here's what happened. I started and the first thing that I learned is that uh, it's cumbersome to, to set up the environment to actually build something uh, written in Rust in the kernel. So you have a lot of requirements just to start building. Uh, you need to uh, have the compiler of the specific version, uh, not to new, not to old. Some, some very new compilers wouldn't work either. Uh, and there's, there's a tool called bind gen, which also has to be of a specific version. And uh, if you're working off of, I don't know, Ubuntu 22, uh, the version that comes with it doesn't work. The w version of Rust C that comes with it doesn't work. And um, mm, the next thing that I learned that error messages sometimes just don't help at all. Uh, like uh, the one uh, that I posted there, it's, it's a real it's a real error message. Uh, when uh, I believe when bind gen. Uh, is of a wrong version. So if it's a wrong version, uh, then then you, you try you try to compile a Rust file and and, and you and you get an error that uh, scripts JSON file doesn't exist. Well, what does have what, what does this have to do with you know coding in kernel, right? So I mean, there's there there has to be a lot of file guessing or it can turn to uh, to the quick start Rust documentation, which is actually pretty good. So if you just follow it step by step, uh, chances are you'll be set up and you'll be up and running. Uh, some of the steps I still do not understand. So I just do not understand what they do. Uh, but if you just do those steps, uh, then it's very likely that you'll be able to uh, compile the run Rust code in the kernel. Um, Okay, what's next? I learned, uh, at the point I started, there wasn't even an ARM64 support in the main line. Uh, it was uh, merged pretty much at the moment uh, I was trying to write my code. So I first did stuff uh, on x86 QEMO. And then uh, th there was this ARM64 merge in 6.9 and I tried, well, I used it in 6.9. Uh, and then there was a merge uh, for, for RISC-V uh, and it's also 64-bit. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if anyone is interested that much in 32-bit uh, RISC-V targets, uh, but 32-bit ARM targets are, are still of interest, at least to me. Uh, and the fact that I cannot use code written in Rust uh, for those targets those targets uh, is uh, is still confusing, and uh, I don't know, demotivating. Uh, let's put it this way. 
So Rusty, uh, Rust is ad block. Rust is ad block. Okay. Um, since I was able to uh, make the compilation right then, okay, uh, let's create the the stub functions and try to register uh, the Z block written in Rust uh, with stub functions uh, as a Z, Z full backend. Um, and, and and here here comes uh, here comes first the first uh, surprise for me. So. Uh, I wasn't able with, with bind gen or whatever. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, get the the uh, struct list head uh, working properly in Rust. Um, once again, once again, uh, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, you can't do it. Maybe uh, most of you guys can do it and can do it better than me. Uh, I, I'm still new to Rust. I was even newer to Rust when I did this, uh, and and uh, and so uh, uh, I'm just sharing my experience. This this uh, was a problem for me. Uh, doing it the right way was a problem for me. Uh, so what I did, I just mapped. Uh, I just created created a local structure which is just doing the same thing. It maps uh, it maps to the uh, list head that's in the uh, C header, uh, so it's it's the same structure, but it was easier. Uh, it's easier to recreate the structure rather than to do it via bind gen or whatever tool there is. And um, the same thing, or almost the same thing, applies to uh, to many many of uh, the structures and, and fields that you need to use uh, in order to register uh, the the Rust driver, the Rust code uh, in the subsystem written in C. So, um, to be honest, yeah, that, that's, that, that wasn't a very nice experience, but uh, we got through it. Uh, still, still it's, uh, it's still a bit of hacks um, in the code when it comes to this particular part. So, um, algorithmic uh, Changes well, or rewriting algorithms in Rust uh, wasn't that much of a problem because um, the the algorithms used in ZBlock are pretty simple. Um, th there are there are some idiomatic things that I probably uh, more like than dislike. So you, you can't use memset on arrays, uh, but that's okay. The the ways uh, that uh, Rust have to has to offer uh, to to do uh, things like uh, uh, initialization and uh, zeroing a huge array. Uh, these things are actually short and descriptive, and I don't have any problem with that. So those Rust idioms uh, they're quite okay. Um, on the other hand, uh, when, when we come to uh, working with uh, stuff uh, that Rust imports one way or another from uh, the C parts uh, of the Linux kernel, from the C subsystems, uh, like for instance, spin locks, uh, then, then it's, um, it, it's a little bit of brain damage to me. Uh, because because the, the, the guards they, they just they just cloud the meaning so they, the whole the whole thing I mean we, 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 we do system development with the kernel development uh, if if at that point we so, so uh, like this this guard thing it, it's it's over com complicated uh, with probably the the only goal of uh, being being able to, to not unlock so you don't have to unlock and 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 you know the creators of this thing obviously thought that it would make things safer uh, but on the other hand this this is system development for god's sake so if you can't if you can't remember to to unlock and spin lock maybe you shouldn't try drivers in the first place so this this whole thing just clouds the meaning and and it's so so complicated and it, and it looked so ugly so so um so I, what, what I had to do 
uh, is to, to create to create something like this. Uh, doesn't look too nice either, uh, but at least it does the thing. Um, and and then and then the code, which which is also important because I, I have the reference code in C, and then the code is uh, is working in more of the same way as the C code. So uh, that was my goal as well. Uh, however, however. Uh, to to keep to keep the good and bad balance, I absolutely have to say that uh, the, the atomics in Rust are done nicely, and uh, I had good time using those. So, absolutely uh, not worse than C atomics in Linux kernel. So that's that's a good thing. Um, okay, so what's what's um, yeah? Here's the real piece of code. Um, once again, I'm not a Rust programmer, uh, but um, in my experience, there's a lot of circling around uh, when it comes to uh, doing things in Rust because of these things like variable as type, whatever. Um, I, would, I would like to have some way of simplifying this. Or, or not having to use this, at least in the unsafe blocks. Because once again, uh, it's just more complicated to read things like that. Uh, but that's just wishful thinking. Uh, and anyway, anyway, uh, at the end of the day, I got it working. And since I got it working, uh, I was personally interested in doing comparisons, uh, both for uh, the C version of that block and for the Rust version of that block, and so we are uh, going to the fun part. Um, and the first, the first thing I was interested in is how the object sizes relate. Uh, and it turns out that well, Rust does quite a good job generating object code, which is pretty small. So. Um, in some cases, if you if you strip all the debugging information, uh, the, the Rust version may even be uh, smaller uh, than uh, the C version of the same thing of the same algorithm. As you can see, for ARM64 stripped, and and I believe for for X8664 stripped also. Yeah. So generating code. Well, we can we can absolutely give Rust a plus here. Um, so, aggregate test, uh, running uh, Linux kernel compilation on Raspberry Pi for B, um, that swap with that LZ4 enabled, and there are several backends, so we, we, we take that bot, we take that smalloc, we take that block, uh, no rust at this point. Um, and um, once again, this is not exactly relevant to uh, to the whole Rustification thing, but uh, at least it proves the concept that Z log is something Z log is something to uh, to work on and to use uh, because uh, we we can see we can see that uh, it gives a slight advantage uh, over ZS malloc uh, in the compilation time. Uh, Kuima x86-64, so we have Z-block Rust also. Uh, and we can see that uh, it takes more time with Z-block Rust, uh, but the difference is not critical. Um, less aggregate test, so it's, it's a more specific test, it's stress ng, uh, and then we, we capture the traces on Z-swap load. Uh, and that was run on IMX8. And uh, we can see that uh, Zblog is uh, significantly better uh, when it comes to uh, loading a page that has been swapped out. And uh, to a certain extent, uh, the Rust version inherits that. So it's working faster than ZSMALC in uh, most cases, uh, but still slower than the C version. 
uh, storing page, so uh, the page that's swapped out and that we need to store, uh, then ZS malloc has a clear advantage. And uh, we can see that ZBlock Frost uh, behaves worse uh, than the ZBlock written in C. And uh, since uh, it's not really uh, long since we got the results, got the stable uh, as at block rust in the results of testing. Uh, so we haven't really found, found out uh, why it takes longer for Z block rust to, to operate, uh, but that's something to, to look into. Uh, but uh, as we come to the conclusions, um, that's, uh, you know, uh, debugging and profiling Zblock Rust is still uh, mostly a recreational activity because uh, since the ARM32 support for Rust is still not there, uh, that is basically disqualifying uh, the Rust version for, from, from being submitted and being used. So uh, obviously we will go with the C version at least for, for the time being. Uh, but going back to to a summary, which I believe is is a fair summary, um, doing kernel coding in Rust has a point because the code is, is still I mean it's executing fast enough. Uh, it has a smaller footprint than the C code, surprisingly, at least in our experience. Uh, and, and then and then there is a um, there's a point to safety too, because you can limit the, the, the blocks that are unsafe. You cannot live without them uh, because Rust is not the silver bullet. You still have to have unsafe sections, uh, but you can limit uh, um, the usage of unsafe operations to these unsafe sections. Uh, and then if something goes wrong, you uh, have less code to debug, less code to look into. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, the, the threshold, however, for getting into this is uh, set quite high. It's not easy to get going. The environment setup is cumbersome. And uh, I would love to see some real scripts doing this for me and for, for others uh, because in most cases I'm not interested uh, in in setting up and, and, and checking the compiler version for, for Rust. I just want to get things going, at least in the beginning. Um, and then again, uh, it's lacking support for important architectures like 32-bit ARM, which uh, is still important in our work. Uh, and uh, that's, that's, something, that's something that I'm not even sure uh, when it will be ready. So this, this is a huge drawback. But it might not be relevant to your particular work. Um, so, um, yeah, um, Zlock is a Z-swap allocator intended to replace the Z-threefold, uh, and it's working reasonably well, as we can see on the charts. And, it, it, yeah, there's, there's a Rust version that we use to play around, uh, and it's uh, working reasonably well, too. Um, and in some cases, for some of... Uh, up, uh, applications for some uh, of the, the workloads. Rust can be a very good uh, alternative to C coding, but in our particular case, it still isn't. Uh, and and that's, that's pretty much it. Thanks for your attention. So, I guess it's time for questions. Yeah, you mentioned that the uh, assembly produced by the Rust locks was um, was problematic or ugly. Could you ex expand on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have I don't have the code with with me, but uh, at some point we were debugging uh, the, the the code and we were looking at uh, the obj dumps, the, the the assembly code, and um, it it was really hard to comprehend. It's it's like it's like with C for instance. So 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 there's um, there there is a lot of 
information that is not for humans eyes basically uh, and and there's a lot of jumping around you know do, doing doing some jumps um, as opposed to to see to see execution see, see execution path so when you compile um, uh, code from from C, from C to to binary code to assembly code uh, it's usually less less jumps than, than uh, what Rust compiler generates. So I mean, I mean, you, you try to analyze with your eyes uh, the, the code that's been generated, and and it takes a lot of time to understand what's going on there. So that that's that, that's the point. Any other questions? Okay. Oh. So the last code was smaller. Did you do obstams and figure out why that was the case? Because it looks like uh, the C compiler was optimizing for performance while Rust was optimizing for size. Mm. Could that explain yeah, that, the that, discrepancies? That's that's very possible. Um, I, I haven't I haven't looked deeply into this. Uh, I was surprised enough that Rust code was smaller, so I think uh, I think he, essentially uh, it should be possible to um, get the C code smaller than Rust code. But uh, even even being on par is still a good result. So that's the, so, so that's that's something that I wasn't really expecting. Okay, uh, this is maybe back to the locks. Uh, I don't know that much about Rust yet, maybe, uh, but I guess Rust has the same problem as C++, as C++ that it, it needs to look after exceptions. That's the base reason for the guards. Uh, but like in the kernel code, I don't, I'm not sure like if the Rust there is in some form where the exceptions are disabled, like can do you do in C++ or how this is handled. Do you know anything about that? I I'm not sure really. I haven't seen I haven't seen exceptions in 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 the Rust code that uh, that I was in the Rust kernel code that I looked for. Yeah, as an inspiration, uh, but um, I guess I guess I'm not competent enough to to answer this. Can I just comment on that? Rust doesn't have the exceptions like C++. This is why it's a good thing to the kernel. And what we see about the, the guard is because Rust has a RIA array like C++. So it's hiding the, the drop that is unlocking. It's not because of exceptions. Just to comment on that. Yeah, but it, it's it, the idiomatic Rust is with block, and I, I, it's like safe, uh, safe for the user. But as a kernel development, I understand that we like to see the lock and unlock. Yeah, and it it was nice to see uh, from a person with no with a lot of knowledge. This, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I guess thank you all.